Good afternoon, it's Pastor Remke here with your noon devotion. I thought for our noon devotions this week, we would go through Luther's small catechism. And we have these beautiful shields that adorn our western wall as you walk out of the sanctuary of the six chief parts of Luther's small catechism. They will be a part of our noon devotion, as well as hymns, uh, Luther's catechetical hymns. Today our hymn is 581, these are the Holy Ten Commands. We'll have those uh, today. I'll also introduce you to a, a great uh, and helpful tool that the church has long had called a Beichtspiegel, that is a confessional mirror. It is questions that uh, the Christian is encouraged to examine themselves with before making confession, and it's a helpful thing as we examine our lives uh, in accordance with the Ten Commandments. And so uh, we will also have the meaning of each shield as a part of our devotion as well. So. We turn now in prayer and praise to our Heavenly Father, who hears our prayers, who has given us a good and godly confession in His Church, and who will have mercy on us as we pray in the hymn, Have Mercy, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Ten Commandments shield portrays the historic, historical reality of God, portrayed by the Tetragrammaton in the burning bush. And you see here at the bottom of the shield, there's the burning bush in which God appeared to Moses and gave him his holy name, Yahweh. This is the Tetragrammaton. It just means four letters. Uh, Yahweh in the bush in Hebrew. Uh, and God gave this holy law to Moses in a historical setting from uh, the heights of Mount Sinai as well as a theological reality of Christ, the Son of God, very God, a very God, fulfilling that law perfectly for us through his holy, perfect sacrifice upon Mount Calvary. And so we go through the Holy Ten Commandments. These are the Holy Ten Commands God gave to us by Moses' hands. When high on Sinai's mount he stood, receiving them for our good have mercy, Lord. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. In what or whom do I trust above all else? In what or whom do I trust most for financial security, physical safety, or emotional support? Do I fear God's wrath, avoiding every sin? Is my love for and trust in God evident in my daily living? Do I expect only good from God in every situation, or do I worry, doubt, complain, or feel unfairly treated when things go wrong? Do I withhold from God what is rightfully His? I am alone your God, the Lord, no other God shall be adored, but you shall fully trust in me, and love me wholeheartedly, have mercy, Lord. The second commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Is the Lord's word evident in my daily speech and conduct, or do I curse, speak carelessly, or misuse God's name? Do I keep all the vows I have made in the Lord's name, such as confirmation, marriage, or legal vows? Am I diligent and sincere in my prayers, or have I been lazy, bored, or distracted? Do I trust that the Lord God will answer them according to his good and gracious will? Do not my holy name disgrace, do not my word of truth debase, praise only that as good and true which I myself say and do have mercy, Lord. The third commandment, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching in his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Do I despise the word by neglect or by paying little or no attention when it is read or preached? Do I attend the church's worship faithfully, or do I attend sporadically because I prefer to be elsewhere? 
Do I pray for my pastor and other church workers and support their efforts in service to the word? Do I, as a pastor of God's flock, fulfill my calling through diligent preparation and faithful preaching of God's word? You shall observe the worship day, that peace may fill your home and pray, and put aside the work you do, so that God may work in you. Have mercy, Lord. The fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Do I honor my father and mother and other authorities, such as teachers, employers, supervisors, governmental leaders, and pastors, receiving them as gifts that God has put in authority over me? Have I been angry, stubborn, or disrespectful toward those in authority over me? Do I obey all the laws of the city, state, and country? Do I faithfully represent God the Father in disciplining, caring for, and catechizing my children? Do I exasperate my children, or do I bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord? Am I threatening, abusive, or overbearing to others in my household or workplace? You are to honor and obey your father and mother every day. Serve them each way that comes to hand. You'll then live long in the land. Have mercy, Lord. The fifth commandment, you shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Have I unjustly taken the life of anyone, born or unborn? Do I treat my own body as a temple of the Holy Spirit, or do I hurt or harm it by gluttony, chemical addiction, or other abuse? Do I hate anyone, or am I angry with anyone? Do I lose my temper or injure my neighbor by thoughts, words, or deeds? Do I hold grudges or harbor resentment? Do I ignore the plight of the helpless, or am I callous toward genuine need? You shall not murder, hurt, nor hate, your anger dare not dominate. Be kind and patient, help defend, and treat your foe as your friend. Have mercy, Lord. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. Am I in an inappropriate relationship with someone other than my spouse? Do I look at others lustfully and thereby commit adultery with them in my heart? Do I give myself freely and selflessly to my spouse? Do I dishonor marriage by ridicule or divorce? Do I engage in any form of unholy living? Be faithful to your marriage vow. No lust or impure thoughts allow. Keep all your conduct free from sin. By self-control, discipline, have mercy, Lord. The seventh commandment, you shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. Do I cheat or otherwise seek to get what I have not earned? Do I take care of what I have, pay what I owe, return what I borrow, and respect other people's property? Do I give generously? Or am I selfish, stingy, and greedy with my time and money? Am I unfaithful to the responsibilities of my vocation? You shall not steal or take away what others worked for night and day, but open wide a generous hand and help the poor in the land. Have mercy, Lord. The eighth 
commandment, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. Do I gossip, listen to rumors, or take pleasure in talking about the faults or mistakes of anyone? Do I defend others against false accusations? Do I judge others without the authority to do so? Do I speak the truth in love, trying at all times to explain everything in the best possible way? Bear no false witness, nor defame your neighbor, nor destroy his name. But view him in the kindest way. Speak truth in all that you say. Have mercy, Lord. The ninth commandment. You should not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house or get it in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping Am I discontent with what belongs to me? Do I crave something better, different, or more than what God has given me? Do I seek to satisfy the desires and appetites of my flesh at the expense of the well-being of others? Do I resent or envy those who have what I do not? The Tenth Commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, workers, or animals or turn them against him, but urge them to stay and do their duty. Am I discontent with the spouse, family, vocation, job, or employees the Lord has given me? Have I done anything to break up a friendship or marriage? Have I encouraged someone to be unfaithful to spouse, family, vocation, job, or employees? Am I contentious, or have I encouraged disharmony in my congregation, family, or workplace? Am I manipulative or controlling? Have I done all I can to mend or strengthen broken relationships? You shall not crave your neighbor's house, nor covet money, goods, or spouse. Pray God he would your neighbor bless, as you yourself wish success, have mercy, Lord. The close of the commandments. What does God say about all these commandments? He says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. What does this mean? God threatens to punish all who break these commandments. Therefore, we should fear his wrath and not do anything against them. But he promises grace and every blessing to all who keep these commandments. Therefore, we should also love and trust in him and gladly do what he commands. You have this law to see therein, that you have not been free from sin, but also that you clearly see. How pure toward God life should be, have mercy, Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our works cannot salvation gain, they merit only endless pain. Forgive us, Lord, to Christ we flee, who pleads for us endlessly. Have mercy, Lord. And so we learn from the Ten Commandments how God desires us to live. We also learn from the Ten Commandments to cry out for mercy in all of our shortcomings, in all of our sins, in all of our weaknesses. Christ is there to fulfill what we could not fulfill. Forgive us, Lord, to Christ we flee. 
who pleads for us endlessly. Have mercy, Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always.